thanks a lot for the <coughs> introduction program and thanks for the invitation. Um, so everything I want to discuss today is to join work with uh Sanchez and uh, Ben Pea. So I realize, given the audience, that what I prepared is probably too elementary, but uh, let me still stick to my um, original plan. So I want to speak about uh, PLD non abelian hot series. Um, so let me first try to explain what the general context is. For this, I want to very briefly recall uh, what the statement is uh, over the complex numbers. And uh, for this, let me state the uh, theorem, which I think is due to Carlos and Simpson. Uh, so we uh, pick X uh, compact Taylor manifold. The other complex numbers, uh, and then we have uh, an equivalence of category on tile in X uh, between, on the one hand, uh, the category of representations of. Uh, the topological fundamental group of X. So I'm implicitly uh, fixing a, a base point here on uh, finite dimensional uh, C vector spaces. And uh, on the other hand, uh, semi stable. Bundles uh, on X uh, with vanishing uh, rational uh, charm classes. So uh, let me not uh, recall precisely what these conditions mean, but maybe just recall what the X bundles mean. So a hit bundle is a pair E comma theta, where E uh, is an holomorphic vector bundle. And X. And uh, theta is what is called the X field. So it's an OX linear map from E to it's invisible. Uh, from E to E, tensored with a uh, shift of differential sum on X. Uh, so, as I said, it's OX linear. And it tries to satisfy the X field condition, which is that uh, theta wedge theta and vanishes. So, another way to say this is if you fix a local basis of the shift of differentials, then uh, you can look in this basis at the coordinate of uh, your Higgs field, which are endomorphism of your vector bundle, and you are just requiring that this endomorphism commute with each other. And uh, such a kind of <laughs> this kind of statement is called non abelian Hopf theory because uh, it can be thought of as. A non abelian generalization of uh, Hodge decomposition in degree one. If I look at basic homology of X, uh, so the direct sum of H1 of the super shift with lower sections of the shift of differentials. And uh, singular homology is also the same as. 
morphism from phi one of x to c. So we can think uh, of this statement as some kind of generalization from the case of the additive group GA uh, to GLA. Okay, so as you can guess, uh, PLD non abelian theory is about uh, finding a PLD analog of these statements. And in this setup, I would like to replace my compact Taylor manifold. Uh, by a smooth and proper rigid variety over C, where C here is a uh, complete algebraically closed uh, non Archimedean expansion of Q. Ooh. For example, the field uh, CP of PLX numbers. And we know uh, by work of Schultz that the uh, Rochester Hans spectral sequence uh, degenerates for such uh, smooth property spaces, which uh, provides some kind of <coughs> partial justification for this being a more analog of this, uh, this condition of us. Uh, and what we can already observe is okay, on the right, on the left hand side, nor we will read like. Consider the retail fundamental group. And uh, of course, it where our representations to be continuous. Uh, on the right hand side, at least if I ignore all these adjectives, the notion of Higgs bundle still makes sense. Uh, if I seem to my vector bundle as being a vector bundle for the analytic topology. <clears throat> uh, so before fully switching to the PID uh, setup, let me. Observe that first step in uh, Corlett Simpson uh, construction of this equivalence over C is uh, to use Riemann Hilbert to. Uh, <coughs> so we will replace uh, the representation of the fundamental group by a vector bundle with flat connection. So if we have O, which is a representation, uh, as you have on the left hand side, so B is an dimension of C because space. Uh, we can attach to it a flat connection. And uh, the underlying vector bundle we describe as we take the product of the vector space V with the universal cover, and you mod this out by the diagonal action of the fundamental. Here, this comes with a flat connection, and then you need to do some hard work to come out to, uh, get the Higgs bundle associated with this. But uh, already, this first step is a priori uh, problematic in the rigid analytic setting. So, in the rigid setting, uh, the universal cover does not really make sense as a rigid space. But what you can still do is uh, embed uh, your category of smooth rigid spaces over C inside a bigger category in which. Uh, Taking such a limit of a whole possible finite detail cover makes sense. And in this case, you can embed uh, fully faithfully inside the category of diamonds over space C. And in this category, you can make sense as shifts of x tilde as a limit of a whole possible finite detail, like say, connected finite detail cover. Uh, of x prime. And then you could try to make a similar construction. So if you have no representation of the retail fundamental group of x, 
on some finite dimensional C vector space, you can look at the corresponding vector bundle W defining a similar. But since X tilde is not a rigid space, uh, the thing you get this way is not a vector bundle for the analytic topology. So what you get is an example of the following uh, general definition. So this definition makes sense for any X space over P. So let no X be. And then space L of spot UP. Uh, then you can consider the V side of X. So uh, <clears throat> it's a certain side. So as a category, it's the category of all perfect to spaces. Uh, living over this. And you need to handle this with a certain rotten topology, and you take the topology uh, generated by a subjective map. of affinoid perfect weights. So it's a very fine topology. Basically, the, it's a bit like some kind of analog of the FPQC topology. In this context, the only condition you put is certain quasi compacity assumption on the cover. And I could also actually have worked with the poet topology for those matters. Um, but since this is, this will define a cover, uh, this will define a perfect to its space, uh, mapping to X. <coughs> and the object W I, I just defined is an example of uh, a sheep of O modules, which uh, will become by construction trivial uh, over this V cover. So let me, uh, uh, since I introduced the site, I can uh, also introduce the corresponding structure sheep. So let O be uh, the sheep on the V side, which sends which send some uh, perfect to its space S to uh, just a ring of functions on on S. So that's what I define to be the structure sheep on the B side. Then here. Uh, I can define the V vector bundle. Uh, X. Well, sometimes I will just say V bundle. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, when you say surjective, you just mean surjective on like sets of points. Yes. Okay. On surjective as map of any space. Yeah. On yeah, if you sets want, of points underlying. If, if you have any perfect to its space S over X, yeah. uh, the cover is just, so the cover will be. A family of a collection of map fi uh, between perfect to its spaces over x with the property that whenever for any quasi compact open uh, u in s i can find uh, a certain <coughs> subset of i which is finite And uh, for each time j, I want ui inside the si, which is quite a compact open. So that u is a union of the images of the, of the u. But jointly subjective map of adding spaces such that any quasi-compact open can be covered by finitely many quasi-compact open. Uh, 
that makes sense. Do you want equality or just inclusion? Uh, no, I think I want equality. I think I want equality. It probably doesn't. Okay, so uh, so let me finish this definition of v-vector bundle on x, or sometimes I would just say v-bundle. Is a finite locally free shift of uh, all modules on x. Ah, maybe I should have said you put this quasi compacity condition in the definition of the V cover just because you want to avoid covers like if you have, say, some affinoid disk, you could just embed the origin into it and consider its open complement. And you don't, you don't want this to be a V cover. So that's why you put such a, such a finish. Okay, so Thanks. let's say um, I have a space X that the two maps consisting of X and the identity map plus any point um, with the inclusion would be a cover. Uh -huh. Okay. Sorry, so W is supposed to be an example of a V vector bundle? Yeah, I was just trying to motivate this definition of V vector bundle in this context. I think that if you try to imitate what you would do over C to get an associated uh, vector bundle, a flat vector bundle associated to your local system, then you go to the universal cover. So I guess I'm confused about what V means there in that formula of the W. What kind of object is it? Uh, just uh, as a vector space, as a finite dimension vector space. Oh, that would be the, uh, the total space of the corresponding V. Ah, that's what it means. So, uh, I will, anyway, not make use of this construction. It was more to try to just to motivate why one may, in this setup, be led to consider the problem. <coughs> so, in fact, the so question I'm trying to address is uh, not exactly try to answer an analog of, to find a periodic analog of this, uh, call it Simpson uh, theorem, but rather to try to a goal will be to try to relate uh, the vector bundles on my smooth rigid space. So no x is as before, smooth rigid space of us C. And it's fun. So this notion of B bundle is due to uh, five things, which uh, gave it another name. So five things for these objects that generalize all presentations. So its definition looks a bit different, but is actually equivalent to uh, this notion of B bundle. And for its uh, proper, sorry, this proper. Uh, it proves that it contains fully faithfully the category of representation of the pi one uh, like this, which uh, somehow justifies its name. And he observes that somehow, instead of finding a periodic analog of Carlitt Simpson, you can try to answer a more general, but in some sense easier question, which is instead of relating representations of the etal fundamental group to some Higgs bundles, with this, some adjectives which should somehow replace the one we had over C. Uh, you can try instead to relate all B bundles, that is, all generalized representations, to all Higgs bundles. And so, if you can do that, then you can wonder what are exactly the Higgs bundles which should come from representations instead of generalized representations. But this is a question I won't 
uh, discuss today. So from now on, the focus will be on relating these two notions. So you can think to this as uh, trying to describe vector bundles for this very fine topology in terms of data, which from only involves the analytic or etapic topology. And in fact, there is no reason to restrict to the case where the base is a complete algebraically closed extension of QP. And in what, in what follows, we will also consider uh, other kinds of bases. So maybe one uh, remark before continuing about the bundles is that if X is a, not a rigid space, but no perfect rigid space, Uh, it's a theorem of k u that d vector bundles and analytic vector bundles are the same thing. So you don't not really gain anything by it. Considering the topology instead of the usual analytic topology. But in general, and in particular in the case of smooth rigid spaces, uh, these two notions are uh, very different. And maybe I can give uh, two facts which uh, uh, show <coughs> this difference. So, Let's say that instead of being over some algebraically closed field, you are over a periodic field and you put yourself in the simplest possible situation. So that X be just the adding spectrum of K, where K is a periodic field. So this for me means that it's a, a complete discretely valued field with a perfect residue field. Then you can compare the vector bundles uh, okay. so I claim that this contains uh, strictly the category of analytic vector bundles so what's a vector bundle for the analytic topology and Adic spectrum of field is just the same thing as a k vector space. And I mention that. But now, if I look at v vector bundles, well, my v vector bundle, I can pull it back to the poetal tensor, which is given by uh, adic spectrum of the completed algebraic closure of k. And this is a perfect weight field. So, by the theorem of k value, after uh, this pullback, I get something which is just an analytic vector bundle. That's a fine emotional uh, vector space over this completed algebraic closure. And then I just need to remember how to descend. And so the category you get is just the same thing as the category of finite dimensional uh, C semi linear uh, <coughs> continuous. Gal K representations where C is which uh, is bigger than so another illustration of this difference between B bundles and analytic bundles is uh, that computation of uh, shows so that if you have x to be, which is a smooth rigid space, go back to my original setting, x is a smooth rigid space of C, or spa C. And then you have a morphism of site from the V site to the etal site, with any etal cover defined in particular or V cover. And she also computed the higher direct images of the 
structure shift on the V side along this morphism. And when you uh, look at what you see in degree I, you get uh, the shift of differentials uh, with a tight twist by minus I. So in some sense, uh, this structure shift on the V side it sees some information about differentials on this. Which also somehow maybe the sad statement somehow gives you some hope that maybe to, to describe the bundles we will be able to, to do so on the etal side of X by using some information involving the differentials, like the X bundle. Or in case say, do we know for which k is the other thing? Say again. So for which k this is the same, these two are the same. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, I don't know what you want to say. I don't think there are. Do you think there are cases where we can do this? Oh, sorry, at least when you say case perfected, this is the other thing that we just. Uh, for me, PLD field just means, I'm oh, sorry, I said it all right, but it just means complete descriptive value. Oh, right. is perfect, basically. Okay. Or maybe let me just say, sorry, but then they're now the same, right? Hmm? Then they'll never be the same. They will not be the same. That's what I was. So, for example, Okay, I care about this case, so I don't just to find this. Okay. Um, sorry, before you, um, when you say chaotic field, um, are you also assuming characteristic zero or are we also allowed characteristic P? Uh, yeah, let me assume characteristic zero. Okay, so uh, it was just to uh, give an idea of the difference between these two notions. So this question of relating V bundles on X bundles it has, has been uh, studied quite a lot since uh, almost 20 years and uh, started with, with five things. And uh, I won't try to uh, survey all uh, contributions because I would forget probably many people. But let me just say that in all, uh, almost all situations, almost all cases where people have studied this, uh, these questions, uh, the features are always the same, that uh, locally on X, Usually, one can find the correspondence uh, between small v bundles and small x bundles. Well, small, I don't want to define, I mean, small hat. Usually, depending on the authors, a uh, different technical meaning, but uh, roughly speaking, small means that you are close, periodically close to the unit object, or to the trivial V or X bundle. And this is okay, this correspondence usually works very nicely, but only between these small subcategories and usually uh, under some strong assumption on X. And then <coughs> Uh, you can try to, you can localize uh, this statement. So remove this assumption that you work locally on X uh, to a correspondence. Uh, again, between small objects. Uh, under some assumption on X. For example, 
uh, assuming that uh, X is a G generic fiber of a smooth formal scheme, uh, hot X over OC. Over OC, uh, which has a lift to a in uh, modulo the square. So under such such liftability assumption, good reduction on liftability assumption, you can uh, go from this local statement to X to a, a global statement. Still, a priori only between small objects. So in some cases, you can even do better and get rid of this uh, small lenses. <coughs> and the results will prove are of a similar kind, uh, but some of the, so they are not really new, but the goal is somewhat to provide a perspective on this question, which hopefully explains a bit more clearly which part of the construction are canonical and contrarian, and which part of the construction of this correspondence depend on some extra choices, which are more destroyed this functionality and make this kind of globalization argument fail in general. Um, already the case of PID field that I mentioned over there uh, show you that one cannot be too optimistic because in this case, this category on the left of GABA representation. It's known by the original work of Sen not to be equivalent to uh, the, what is plays a role in this setting of the category of Higgs quantums, which is the category of Sen modules. So, third dimensional character space plus on the module. So, you, we see that already in these very simple cases, one cannot really expect an equivalence of categories between all objects. And some of the goal is also. To, uh, and that's on this, this area. Any questions? Could, could you maybe comment more on that assumption? Sort of like a. Yeah, maybe I'll come back. I will try to come back to this assumption. That's it. <clears throat> uh, yeah. So, okay, so the main tool we use uh, is. Uh, the whole state stack of, uh, as introduced by uh, Greenfield and uh, Batlury. Um, so I wanted to give some reminder on this uh, prismatic stacks, but maybe I will. Uh, for time reasons, make make it a bit shorter. So the formalism and notations that we use are the ones of uh, Bat and Lurie. So what they achieve is the following. So let's know uh, how can this be a uh, bounded periodic formal scheme. So it's not assumed to be to be smooth. Uh, to this object. To such a formal scheme, baton are able to attach a certain uh, stack on uh, the category uh, of uh, rings on which. Uh, P is important. So it's a stack for the uh, PQC topology. Uh, so it's defined as a certain modular stack of uh, generalized CAR-T divisors. Uh, in the ring of bit vectors, satisfying uh, certain properties. Mm 
maybe I don't I skip the definition, but rather mention the important property that this stack has. Uh, they are related to uh, prisms. So if uh, you have any uh, object on the prismatic side of your uh, formal scheme things, then uh, what you get is a map from uh, which I would call a row A bar from the formal spectrum of a bar, which by definition is M of I, uh, to the hot state stack of things. So this is endowed with a PID topology. And what they prove is that when uh, your formal scheme X is affine and perfectory, this is a perfect way to ring. Then this uh, morphism, uh, so you can, uh, since you have a perfect way to ring, uh, it corresponds to a certain perfect prism, A comma I, so let A comma I be the perfect prism associated to S, which is given by Taking uh, the usual contains A construction. <clears throat> so, in particular, we have that A bar is uh, just isomorphic to S. Then the map for A bar is actually an isomorphic. So this would be more generally true. Uh, for any uh, what is called quasi-regular semi-perfect in S. Uh, if you replace Maybe here, yeah, right? A bar. Okay. If one replaces a formal spectrum of S by a formal spectrum of prism S. So, in fact, you are in a setup where, so now we work with formal schemes instead of rigid spaces. and locally for the symptomic topologies, the uh, stacks you consider are actually just formal schemes. <coughs> and uh, this property uh, of this stack in the perfect way uh, allows us to do the, uh, the main construction. So again, it, it's the bounded the uh, and let me take straight mix to be not a generic fiber and seen as an addict space. So now I, I also forgot to say that this construction of the stack is uh, covalently uh, entirely mixed. You have a map of PID formal schemes, X to Y, you get an induced map from the hot state stack of X to the hot state stack of Y. So this is what we will use together with this fact. So whenever I pick a perfect with uh, ring, S together with a map of PID formal schemes, and the formal spectrum of S to uh, frac x. Then, by functionality, it gives a map from the corresponding hot state stats. And by the fact I recall this, will then uh, uniquely lead to a map from S to the hot state stack of X. And so, in particular, if I have 
the perfect complex on the hot state stack. I can just pull it back to a perfect complex on S, and this frontally in uh, all possible choices of perfect in S mapping to my PID complex. So this way we get a functor from uh, perfect complexes on uh, the hot state stack of X to, uh, well, perfect complex on the category of all perfect spaces uh, mapping to my KD formal scheme. But then I can further pass to the generic fiber, and uh, then I get a perfect complex on the V side of the generic fiber. And uh, because V of P is inverted, I can pass to the isogeny category on the left, and I get a functor which I want to call uh, alpha fractals. So this is the main uh, player of this uh, talk. It would be uh, to understand the property of this construction. So and let me state uh, the main one of the main results. So this construction is completely general. It works for any PID formal scheme. But now I want to specialize to a situation where I try to understand the PID Simpson correspondence. So let me from now on assume that X is either a smooth PID formal scheme over OK, where K can be either uh, a perfect weight field. Uh, in characteristic zero or a PLQ or a QP. Then I claim that the functor uh, alpha x, I just uh, alpha x, I just define this with it. So, uh, something I also did not say about the watch text stack is that uh, it sends uh, symptomic or quasi symptomic covers of PID formal schemes to a subjective map of uh, stacks uh, for the PQC topology. So, given that, that uh, uh, you only care about, like, okay, we, we care about uh, smooth formal schemes. So in particular, they, they are symptomic. And as I already mentioned early locally for this quasi-symptomic topology, I can uh, cover them by uh, such quasi-regular semi-perfectory grid. So one could try to somehow prove. Sorry. So here, if x is perfect types, then the hot state stack is just again s. That's right, yes. It's just. X Hodgkin is a tax. Yes, in the perfect way. But okay, you could try to find a, I mean, you can find a quasi symptomic cover of your smooth formal scheme by something perfect to it. But then when you look at uh, the church nerve, so when you look at the fiber products of this perfect to formal scheme in itself over uh, your smooth base, uh, you will get something which is not necessarily perfect to it anymore, but only quasi regular symmetric. So you still have some good control on what the hot state stack looks like in this case. But for general, for the regular semi perfect way, uh, such a claim won't be true. So you can't really after you try to prove this by some kind of decent argument. You have to argue directly using those processes. And the way we do it is by uh, well, using uh, the fact that I did not tell you yet that and in the smooth case, you have a very nice, I mean, in this particular situation, you have a nice description of this, explicit description of this watch face stack. So to prove this. Mm -hmm. 
Which is also due to bank building. Mm -hmm. So the description will be a little different depending whether you are over the ring of integers of the perfect ring field, the situation which I would call the geometric situation. And if you are in the case over the ring of integers of a periodic field, which is what I want to call the arithmetic situation. In fact, in the first case, we can even allow the base to be any perfect ring. It need not be the ring of integers of the perfect ring field. Uh, but maybe for time reasons, let me just uh, discuss the geometric case. So, in this case, you have the following uh, explicit description. So, let me state this as a fact. Uh, so, this description is only local on this, but this is good enough for this statement. So, let's assume that x. This smooth affine formal scheme over OK with three. Uh, uh, then in this situation, we can lift. R, uh, in this case, we know that there exists a prism A comma I, which gives over uh, a hinge well, the perfect prism associated to OK. Uh, such that with lifts R, so A comma I, which is I denoted before by A bar, is isomorphic to R. And uh, then the induced map O A bar from the formal spectrum of R in the offset stack to induce an isomorphism. Uh, between x such state and uh, the classifying stack over, so this is just a piece of common scheme x. The classifying stack, relative classifying stack over x of something which is constructed out of the uh, tangent bundle of x over OK. So let me decorate it so I have a sharp and a twist. So here, uh, six so over OK, sharp. Uh, so it's <coughs> the uh, uh, p completion of the divided power envelope of the zero section in the tangent bundle of x over OK. So it's a formal spectrum of the uh, divided power algebra. Of the sheet of differential, uh, sorry, the module of differential so, uh, R over OK, uh, and then periodically complete. So, for example, in the one dimensional situation, uh, in the case where if we assume that this module is trivial, uh, then we, what we are uh, Basically, doing is we're just looking at uh, 
G8, a fine line, and we are just adding divided power of the coordinate. And then this twist is a Boycusing twist, which uh, for what I'm to do is uh, not so important. Okay, um, <clears throat> so then to prove this uh, fully faithfulness statement, uh, we can argue locally on X, so we can reduce uh, again. Just I'm um, only discussing here the geometric case. We argue locally on X, and uh, then the whole state stack uh, by this description is very explicit. It's, it's a classifying stack. And well, then you need to do some explicit computation, which ultimately reduces to a Galois cohomology computation of a certain paired ring uh, to obtain this uh, fully faithful mistake. But maybe uh, let me. Uh, not say more about the proof of this theorem and rather try in the five remaining minutes try to explain how this uh, theorem is related to my original motivation and then uh, let's get this question. And once again, let me focus. On the, in the geometric phase only. So <clears throat> we see that uh, in this, for this functor alpha x, uh, the target is uh, exactly the kind of things we care about. I mean, one of the two categories we care about, except that I replaced uh, the category of vector bundles by some uh, derived enhancement, which is a category of perfect complexes. To connect such a fully faithful statement to periodic Simpson, it remains to understand why the source category has anything to do with uh, its bundles. And uh, again, the, uh, the relation will be given by the explicit structure of the state stack uh, locally. So, for this, let me uh, maybe first observe that some relativity argument. So if we look at what we had in this uh, local situation, Cartier duality argument tells you that um, the category of uh, whether coherent shifts on the classifying stack, like the relative classifying stack over X. So X now can be, will be any smooth PLD common scheme over OK. And if I look at such a classifying stack, then you can compute the Cartier dual and the, the relation between uh, Cartier duality between uh, divided powers and formal completion tell you that this category is actually equivalent to the full subcategory. Uh, of the category of quasi coherent shifts on uh, the cotangent bundle with uh, twist minus one, with the following uh, topological nilpotence property, so formed by complexes. And uh, uh, for any I find open U of uh, your forms in X. Uh, you have that each element, each section, uh, delta in uh, omega one will act uh, importantly. On uh, the cohomology of M on U uh, based change model P.
<clears throat> okay, so because the coherent shifts on this classifying stack are exactly the same as uh, in the say if x is just a formal spectrum of R, so if x is just a time, as uh, R modules together with an action of uh, the symmetric algebra, uh, such that the action of each element of the symmetric algebra of the cotangent uh, bundle, yeah, tangent bundle, uh, such that uh, each element acts topologically important. So it's mod p important. And this is exactly the same thing as the, but at the level of the formal scheme so far as the Higgs bundle, uh, where the Higgs field is topologically important. Because the X-field condition, which was this condition that theta wedge theta is zero, in other words, that the local coordinates of your X-field commute with each other is exactly the same thing as saying that uh, you have an action of the symmetric algebra of the tangent bundle uh, on your module. Okay, so the output of this is that uh, a priori we get uh, locally on X. So when X is assumed to be affine, we get a fully faithful functor from the isogeny category of X bundles on the formal scheme, which are topologically important uh, to the get uh, in some derived version of this because we care about perfect complexes uh, towards the category of perfect complexes on the V side. So that's exactly the mechanism I was uh, trying to highlight before that this functor alpha x is canonical, but it's when you try to make explicit the source category that you need to uh, work locally on x and uh, uh, that, you, <coughs> that you get some uh, explicit description involving this functor. So now how to just orally let me finish by saying how to uh, like try to globalize such statement because a priori so far we only get something in the affine case, which is a very a strong section. So as I said, the usual uh, condition one puts uh, to globalize is we assume that uh, we have a lift of our formal scheme to a in modulo xi square. And in the context of the hodge tail stack, how does that show up? Well, the hodge tail stack is always a chair uh, for this. Locally, when X is affine, it does split, but in general, it's still a chair. And <coughs> this maps to uh, the tangent bundle. And the push out of the hot state chair along this natural map is exactly the stack which measures the obstruction to lift your periodic formal scheme to a in on log size square. So this means that this assumption of liftability does not really tell you that the hot state stack itself splits, but that it does at the, after this push out. Um, but so that does not really tell you that in, under this liftability assumption that you get a functor from all topologically nilpotent mix bundles into B bundles. But <clears throat> since after multiplying by Y minus theta P, uh, so you also have uh, a map like this, which suggests the composition is just multiplication by Y minus theta P. So this still tells you that to the, up to the price of imposing a stronger uh, topological impotence condition on your X-field, uh, under this liftability assumption, you can still uh, get a fully phase functor from some smaller class of X bundles, uh, which is exactly the one that is considered uh, towards the bundles on the GM.
questions? But this this might be my ignorance of what's happening uh, in this area. But like, if you just did this entire talk, but you you didn't work with a formal scheme, but just something to find over the special fiber, right? Um, I mean, like, what what what? I mean, it seems like you should get some kind of relationship between. Um, I mean, it should be essentially within this August Wolodowski paper, right? Somehow, there's uh, so, something like very close to it. Maybe, maybe that's actually in the. I guess so, but I don't know much about this August Wolodowski story. So it could. I mean, this condition you write down is also this delinealize type condition. It's like sort of a delinealize type condition, but you deform another. So again, what this August Wolodowski correspondence it relates its bundles. In characteristic P to, um, to modules with connection to be module like relates his bundles on the twist of you know potent star with P minus one to the modules of equation of potent P minus one. Um and characteristic P, I'm not sure what would play the role of this functor, which I could add at least. Uh, if you want to, oh, yeah, yeah, so I guess we'll that's the same. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you can pop into that in this question. Well, I think we can, we can recover, well, like, we can recover slightly a weaker version of what we call a by somewhat similar arguments, but slightly different because, I mean, well, because I'm curious, well, essentially by the same argument, but it's like, okay, I'll just, I'll ask you that. Sorry, so you explain the arguments in the, or you sketch the arguments in the geometric case. Uh, what are the additional inputs in the arithmetic case, if any? Uh, no, I mean, it's essentially the same story. It's just that the structure of the object stack is possibly different, but so the kind of structure you get are a bit more involved, because you see both in three and the same character. But uh, I mean, apart from that, it's. But, it's you, but, you, but you don't need to. If you have something which is a smooth form of scheme over OK, or at least no PSG, we don't need to impose this ability of some kind. You really get to stay current, which obviously involves the choice, I guess, of a uniformizer of PSG, but apart from that, you get kind of. I wanted to ask about this, like the last step, particular duality. So am I correct that you don't? Explicitly required to have the lattice, or it's somehow automatic. Or... The lattice uh, here, everything is for the formal scheme. So. It's something I cheated with. It. I, I did not really explain how you go from such statements to like expand those to the right? Oh, okay, sorry. So you, you need to say something. Uh, so generic fiber should correspond to something that uh, you have a lattice with this property, or existence of the lattice is automatic. Yeah. Right, yes. Well, uh, I mean, I'm not claiming that there is a genetic category. Uh, just, I think what you can check is that if you, okay, we look at this isogenic category of the complex system, the large state stack, mm -hmm. uh, and at least like in the Raffan case, uh, then I think. Uh, this you can check to be maybe up to this identical implementation uh, stuff. You can see to be the same as really expand of some uh, so generic fiber of uh, your format scheme, uh, such that uh, I mean, you can formulate a condition which is similar to what you have said, which a priori involves the choice of your format model. Uh -huh. uh, but in fact, if you look at like omega one. Uh, in fact, this lattice you can describe purely in terms of the domain fiber using the decalage. So the condition you get is you have uh, 
you have a Higgs field here, and you require that for each element uh, coming from this uh, uh, integral structure, the action is uh, important for P. And this a priori may look like uh, this condition looks on the, of course, it requires good reduction to be formulated, but it actually does not depend on the choice of the swings form and model. Because you can recover this as in terms of decalage from the power of five. Sorry, but an element of this module is acting no potently on what? Uh, the same condition as there. Uh, ah, so I should pass this Oh, sorry. So you start with an object of the isogeny. Okay. No, sorry. If I just give you a big spot on the generic fiber. What is the condition? Uh, is that for, okay, so the condition is. So you have a hit bundle, so maybe not the hit bundle, so n, and uh, maybe you can that. So for any uh, sparse C plus, which uh, map to uh, the generic fiber, so it's uh, You want that for any element. Delta in uh, omega one of um, delta x and topologically maybe I think uh, take the fiber at x. Uh, it acts topologically equivalently on the cohomology of. Okay. This is inside. The claim is that this actually does not depend on this condition, does not depend on the choice of the smooth form. And what is it? Uh, M is your X bundle. Oh, okay. Ah, so, in particular, so it's a vector bundle on the generic fiber. We have this uh, an action of the symmetric algebra. So in particular, this condition automatically implies that you have a matches over X is that the facts of the I'm not sure it immediately implies it. But am I right that, like in this isogeny category, it's somehow by definition each object has a matrix? Yes. yes. Okay. And that is that would be, yeah. Okay. The description should be equivalent to the description. Right? Yeah, but then what we check is that if you have such an M on the generic fiber, maybe it's not true that it has a lattice that it extends to the formal scheme, but at least. Um, M plus its uh, shift by one. Uh, so if you pass to the set of total completion, if you look at M plus M shifted one, then it actually says it's some case of. Okay. So maybe this only gives you a lattice yeah. locally? Yes, I guess so. So you say it's like this category should be either for the completion of uh, just the uh, Okay. But the target for our pointer is Other questions? No questions, but thank the speaker again.